Today I'm going to be showing you my process for painting two different movie scenes with gouache and the theme was intentionally Christmas movies which is shocking if you know me because I'm really not a Christmas slash holiday slash December person at all um, like I would permanently stay in the summer months all year round but I guess I'm a publicly admitting that I have a secret love for certain Christmas films I find them kind of nostalgic I don't know anyway um while I take you through my process, I also wanted to chat a bit about the topic of being an artist on the internet or an artist that has grown a following exclusively on social media and a little bit about how I'm trying to break away from letting the algorithms of these different platforms control the course of my artistic journey. I'll have some timestamps linked below in case you want to skip to certain parts. And before we get into it, let's talk materials really quickly. I'm using my trusty Strathmore toned tan mixed media paper, which is just chef's kiss for gouache painting. And for gouache today, I took out my Hemi gouache palette because I wanted easy access to lots of colors and this palette is super easy to use. My brushes are always the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes, which to me are the absolute best for gouache and water-based mediums. But I also took out at a certain point um, the Golden Maple tiny fine detailed brushes, which they sent me to try out and I used them to add those really tiny details since I was painting really small today. So I've started with a Love Actually scene here and this one was a challenge because as you will see it has so many different elements as well as the perspective of the street. This is a scene from that infamous and bizarre storyline where the guy professes his love to Kira Knightley's character through those written signs but I really loved the atmosphere of this particular screen cap which is why I chose to paint it. So last week I posted some fruit studies on YouTube but also on my Instagram and TikTok and on both Instagram and TikTok they hit some sort of algorithm jackpot and I grew several thousand followers on Instagram and it has been my most viewed TikTok so far. I've had a few instances in the two years I've been posting regularly on Instagram where that's happened and it always takes me by surprise but it's such mixed feelings. Like, don't get me wrong, it feels super nice to get all this validation and so many comments praising the work and people messaging me and following me. But on the flip side, it kind of makes me freeze and start to overthink. I feel a bit embarrassed to admit my thoughts around this actually, but essentially I start thinking about how I should make more of this same subject in order to maintain that engagement. And I start getting a bit nervous in case my next piece doesn't perform as well. And what if the piece was a one-off and I can never make art like that again? Essentially, I start to hyper-focus on engagement and start viewing what I do as content that has to grow in engagement versus seeing my art as an intrinsic part of me and my creative expression, which is bound to change and develop and flow. Before I delve into my overthinking, this is how the first scene turned out and I felt like it was a steep learning curve. I had to simplify the scene so that it was more manageable to paint and because I also did it so small, it made it even more of a challenge. Um, I was really trying to nail the perspective. It took me about four-ish hours to do, which is wild to condense into like three minutes. Um, so don't be fooled by these videos, painting takes me a really, really long time. Okay, so back to my thoughts while I paint the cottage from the film The Holiday. So as the post of the fruit studies grew, I found myself thinking that I should continue to do more art that followed the same lines. And so I sat down a few times this week and started painting things that quote unquote I thought people would like and honestly it didn't work like every time I would start to paint I would feel motivated within 10 minutes and I truly think I was creating this narrative of what I thought people would like which is so abstract because in reality I don't really know what I was trying to replicate from those fruit studies and their popularity truly was due to their huge exposure because of the way Instagram and its algorithm works. And by the way, just as a disclaimer, I by no means have a huge following. This is very relative to the numbers that I usually see. So I have about 18,000 followers on Instagram, but I still think this topic can affect artists that post their work online. However small or large their following is, it's all relative. Like I remember having a thousand followers and then having a really popular post and feeling the exact same way. So I think this is linked more to the feeling of getting super validated on one specific piece of art and then feeling like you have to continue making that art to chase that validation versus it being something about how big your platform is. Although I imagine it 
that feeling intensifies the larger your platform gets. To me, this experience was just a huge, huge reminder that the artistic process, the actual making of the art is so important to me. And I have to feel that excitement and urge to create, which is exactly what I felt about doing the fruit studies last week. But this week, I really wanted to do something different. And trying to replicate the abstract concept of popularity is just not the way I want to go about creating art. I really believe that following your enjoyment in the creative process is a sure way of finding and refining your artistic style and voice, as well as being able to create in a sustainable way and avoid as much burnout as possible, because you're following your pleasure in the creative process versus material or tangible outcomes. And it's not that having more material or tangible goals isn't good, like I definitely think it's okay to set those goals for yourself, especially if you're trying to make a living from your art, you have to consider factors beyond just figuring out what you love to create but I guess I'm reflecting on how important it is to keep bringing yourself back to your creative intuition the thing that guides you in what you love to create and what keeps you true to yourself anyway those are just some thoughts that I was having while painting and having fun with these two scenes I got out of my comfort zone especially painting the first scene and even though this isn't the best art I've created by no means when I look at it I feel so happy because I remember the enjoyment that I felt of figuring out how to put it all together by using paint and a paintbrush and to me that's just the best feeling And this is how the second scene turned out. I love painting snow, it's so satisfying. Let me know if you have any thoughts on this topic, I'd really love to hear what you think. I hope you have a great week and that you are able to get creative at some point and I will see you in my next video. Bye!